Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains. And today we're going to talk about signals. As like many of you, I want working signals on my layout, but I didn't really know where to start. In this video, I share my journey as I went through prototypical topics and steered away from overly complicated electronics to find what I really need for my layout. And I share my three guidelines that I discovered whilst going through the rabbit hole and that steered me through the decision making process. What better place to start than with the first guideline? I want the system to be prototypical by spirit. So not 100% prototypical, and I will explain why later on. So for now, let me immediately disclaim that this is not a video explaining various prototypical signal components or features, as that's not what I'm making. And there are plenty of other great videos out there that explain aspects and the whole system way better than I can. The first obvious place to start would be to look in a book. Now what you need to know about my layout is that it's a terminal layout and there's no real main line. It connects to the outside world with three interchanges, but there's no main line or through traffic as such. No main track. Hmm, start with the simplest. There's no main line. Good news. Movements are always at restricted speed. Hmm, 20 miles an hour. Hmm. So if you have no main track, you don't need signals, but clearly there won't be much fast running. Hmm, maybe not the way to go. Hmm, on to the next book, The Guide to Signals in Interlocking. This is a great book and it's a great read. I read it 80% through, but boy, did it make my head spin. But what this book did teach me is what I don't want and what I do slash don't need. And that is when the second and third guideline was determined for figuring out this signal system. Number two, can the system be explained and used easily by operators and also new operators? And three, can I make and maintain the system and will it be fun? Is it within my capability and my skills? And do I like working, for example, with complex electronics and programming? Answer to that is no. So I figured out I don't need interlocking amongst others. I want this logic and safety aspect of it to be with the operators. I mean, it is a switching layout after all. So do I actually need any signals? I can just run trains at restricted speed, right? Huh, maybe not. Maybe we need to talk about train movements and orders for clearance. So in order to give clearance to whoever or whatever, let's say X, we need to first define X and see what we are protecting and why. So this topic also rolls into signal placement. So to communicate this, we first need to add some track numbers. So let's have a look at the layout. Welcome to the CD and TRRA, this is the entire diagram. Don't worry, we're not gonna go through every track. And here are the main components. And I just want to point out there's an interchange in the north, this is north and this is south. Then we have the yard, that's this area right here. Then we have near north, that's conveniently in this yellowish box. And then we have basically the end of the layout right here with a brewery, it's a big industry. And the car flowed right there, uh, going to the Pennsylvania Railroad. So my logic when adding uh, numbers to the tracks was actually just to start counting them from the back of the layout to the front. So I started initially here with track one, then track two and track three, as you see, and I'm only counting sidings or the quote unquote main line. And later on, this became a siding as well. It's just for switching, but that did mean that we needed to have a track zero way up here. I don't see any through trains going here um, ever. So this means that number two is the track for the, the main line, the track, if we look at the entire diagram, that goes all the way from the interchange with the CNW in the north, all the way through the layout to the south, ending at the, uh, yeah, the Penn C interchange right there. Now let's have a quick look on the layout. So in the prototype, they would protect each and every block from having multiple trains and each and every train from entering an occupied block. So the blocks will probably be somewhere here because we have the sidings and then we have the siding coming back here. Then we have a crossover from the two tracks and then we have another crossover over there. So that will mean a block there to probably around there and then a block from here or there to there. So there one, there's one. And this one way over here. So you see there's a lot of blocks. And then for each block, you also have one, two, three signals. So here as well, one, two, three, 
coming in from both directions. Furthermore, the longest train of the layout will be covering multiple blocks and it's a switching layout so there could be cars spotted here, there, everywhere, basically all across the layout. This is a bit debatable, which I did with a friend. We've been debated a lot about what's the best way to put signals, etc., etc. But to get to the point, it's a lot of signals if you want to do it really properly. I don't really feel this is the right way to go. And looping back to guideline number two and three, it's getting pretty complicated from, from an infrastructural point of view and for the operators. This led me to step back and ask myself a little bit, what needs protecting? So first the yard needs to be protected from inbound traffic and also needs to have the ability to hold traffic to prepare for arrival departures. The yard needs to work independently. The north also needs to be able to work independently as there will be multiple crews working the area at once and they have to coordinate as well with through traffic. So we will want to protect near north from inbound traffic as well and the traffic can be orchestrated between these two areas by an operator. The brewery and the car float has been heavily debated what we are going to do with that. It's at the end of the line. Let's just park it for now. For practical reasons, I split the operator in two. A yard master for the yard and an operator for near north. The layout is too small to have a dedicated dispatcher. And on top of that, the room is not that big. And I also don't really see it working to give the entire dispatcher job to the yard master or the near north operator. They're too focused on their own respective area and not the whole picture. Hence, the two areas are distributed to the crews running trains in that area by the local operator slash yard master. With this signal placement, it's possible for two areas to control traffic to and from each other independently. This logic leads to the placement of a signal here for inbound traffic to the yard and here for inbound traffic to the yard, here for inbound traffic to near north, and then finally here on these two tracks, inbound traffic to near north coming in from the south. We will get to the different aspects in a bit. For now, the default is red. For the brewery and car float, all operations will be at restricted speed, which means use your eyeballs. The car float and brewery area are at the end of the layout. There's no through traffic again, so there doesn't really need to be control of inbounds. So after all, there's only these two jobs that might ever be there. However, there does need to be some sort of hierarchy. So I think the barge should have priority over the brewery because it's a bit more time sensitive to switch. I do want to add that in the, the base we had, there's a lot of sense to add additional uh, signals that you see here. This is something I can always do later on. But most of these were actually cut out for reasons that I mentioned earlier. So how is all this going to work? Let's go back to the diagram. As you see, I added the signals. We have signal four here. It's actually 4.2 because it's on track two. Then we have signal 5.2 and 3.2. And then here we have signal 2.1 because it's on track one and 2.2 because it's here on track two. The arrow is a direction of uh, the working of the signal for that direction of traffic. So if train is coming in from this side, it's going to read the aspect of signal number five. So let's have a look at the rule book. And yes, I promise I won't go through all of them. So B1, the yard is under yard control, including signal number four, that's uh, to enter the yard, we went over that, and signal number three, that's also to enter the yard, we've been over that as well. The yard limits is somewhere here, just after the overpass, and here. And then onto rule number B2, New North is controlled by the local operator, including signals number 5.2 and 2.1 and 2.2, both to control the inbound traffic into New North. And here it comes, the operator and engineer that will be the first or only crew switching near north is the operator. So what does that mean exactly? We'll talk about that when we talk about the signal aspects. B3, I'm not gonna read it. You can pause your screen and read it if you want to. Because now we're going to B4, which is covering the signal aspects. Green is quite straightforward. The block ahead is clear and or authority has been given. Then we have uh, red, which is stop. That's quite straightforward as well. Cop the, call the operator in charge and request permission. And then here comes it, uh, B4.3, orange. And orange is proceed with caution. That means there's no operator uh, active at that moment. So the orange is only, as you see on the diagram here, uh, covering the entrance to near north, or the inbound to near north, sorry, and signal one and, and signal two as well. So that means there's two scenarios. If you're at the yard and you want to go 
through near north to the brewery and the signal is on orange the aspect then that means there's no operator there so you need to proceed with a restricted speed because you don't really know what to expect really and prepare be prepared to stop and you go through the entire near north uh, with the orange aspects there you can clear the orange aspect and go to the brewery and or the car float however if you need to be in near north and switch near north then you will be the local operator in that area so that means the orange aspects goes to red on all the inbound signals so signal number five and number two, 2.1, 2.2. And they only go to green once you, because you are the operator, give uh, permission for that train to pass and to uh, knock over the green signal. And then onto rule B.3. So if you're the operator in your north and you're leaving in your north and there's no other operator in your north, then the signals go back to the orange aspect for caution. Or the alternative scenario is you're leaving in your north and there is still another crew in your north, then they will automatically get the operator hat. And the signal uh, system will remain, it will be all red until uh, permission is given to go to green, to that specific job. And then once this crew is done and it departs in your north, then the aspects will go back to orange. Easy, right? So boiling this down to signals and controls and eventually the wiring, there are actually only two use cases um, with each two variables. So use case one, is there an operator in New North? No, signals will be orange. Yes, they automatically go to red. And then if yes, so if the signals are red, has permission been granted? No, they remain red. Yes, they go to green. So how to switch between these two different uh, use cases? Well, with a switch, maybe. So one switch that just controls between the caution, orange, or yes, on, there is an operator there. And then this is what it does exactly. I'm not gonna read it. You can pause your screen if you want to. We've already been over that. But then how to set the aspect. If you're the operator, you want to give permission. It's very simple. It's just with a push button. So we'll have five push buttons to uh, set that aspect to green. And I'm not going to work with a sensor-based system. You can, um, that's probably more prototypical, but I'm gonna work with a time-based system. I don't want the aspects to go back to red if people are sleeping for whatever reason. So I'm gonna set the signal, I guess, to something like 15 seconds. I still need to check exactly what is the right duration for that. So let me now give an example. We have a crew here in near North with the operator hat on. And then we have another engine right here and we want to go through near north. So first we need to call in to the operator. Engine 456, positioned at signal five, brewery job, permission to pass through near north to track one for the brewery. And then the answer can be something like this. Proceed on track 212, proceed at restricted speed after Grand Avenue. And then the train will travel something like this. Very simple and fun. Maybe that's rule number four that I should have added. The system also needs to be fun. So one more underlying requirement that I haven't spoken about is the need for the layout to be flexible in how it is operated. I will have anywhere from one to four people working the railroad at the same time, and there will be two different ways actually of handling jobs. So one way that there's a dedicated yard master who actually uh, covers all the in and outbound jobs. So it will set the cars on the arrival departure track and then that engine can take this stack and go do its, its run and then when it comes back the yard master will then uh, terminate that stack of cars and the engine and that crew can go do another job that is prepared. Now a second way of operating which is actually very prototypical is that one crew would do all this. So that crew would get a, a job which could be the, uh, the job number two, the brewery run or something. Then it would collect its cars at the yard uh, with the engine that it got already, get a caboose, and with all this, go to that job, execute it, and then come back and then terminate the cars by itself again on the yard, park the caboose, and then go back to the engine terminal or take the next job that's on the list. And the system I came up with allows for that flexibility. So don't forget to subscribe and follow if you want to see how I implement the system. That's all for today. Bye-bye.